Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It is great to be with you again. Uh, we are kind of finishing up one of our last weeks of this series that we've been going through, thinking about the prophetic role and the prophetic voice. We've looked at prophets in the Old Testament, prophets in the New Testament, and this is going to be our one of our last weeks. Next week will actually be our last week. We're going to do an interview next week. I hope you'll look forward to that. I'll say a little bit more at the end of our time. But for this kind of wrapping up session, we are thinking about the prophetic role of being a voice from outside the camp. And our biblical example for this kind of role, uh, this kind of aspect of the prophetic voice is Balaam. Uh, now, Balaam's story can be found in Numbers chapter 22 to chapter 24. It's three chapters there in the book of Numbers. The reason we chose Balaam is because Balaam is a non-Israelite. He's someone from sort of outside the tribes of Israel. It's unclear from the biblical story where exactly Balaam is from, but it's clear that he is neither Israelite nor Moabite from the people of Moab. And these are the two main people groups that are warring against it one another, at, at battle against one another in the book of Numbers at this stage in the biblical narrative. Um, so Balaam is known throughout the region as a very talented, very, um, uh, very all-seeing prophet. Uh, he's a seer. He has visions. He uh, provides blessings or curses on peoples. And whoever he blesses seem to get blessed. And whoever he curses seems to get cursed. And so Balak, B-A-L-A-K, Balak, the king of Moab, summons Balaam and asks for him to come and to look out over the people of Israel. Remember, this is the king of Moab, not the king of Israel. So the king of Moab wants Balaam to come and look at the people of Israel and see how numerous they are and then cast a curse on them so that the people of Moab can defeat the Israelites. Now, Balaam goes through this process of trying to meet with God and trying to get a message from God, and there's this back and forth. You can read about it in Numbers 22 and 23. What Balaam is most famous for, though, is when he goes on this journey to meet with Balak, the king of Moab, and on his journey, he's riding his donkey, and his donkey sees the angel of the Lord standing in the road and not allowing them to pass. The angel of the Lord has a sword drawn, it says, and the donkey is able to see this angel, but Balaam and the other men who are with him don't see it. And so Balaam starts beating his donkey and they go on a little bit further and the angel stands in the road again and Balaam beats his donkey because the donkey won't move or he goes off the path to another, another place. Um, and then finally, the, the, the text tells us that God opens the mouth of Balaam's donkey and Balaam's donkey speaks to Balaam and is like, why are you beating me? Um, and can't you see this angel standing in front of the road? And then God opens Balaam's eyes and he sees the angel of the Lord, the angel of Yahweh standing in the road. And Balaam repents and he goes on to meet with Balak and Balak tries to get Balaam to put a curse on the people of Israel, but Balaam won't do it because Balaam has seen Yahweh and Balaam knows that he can't curse any people who Yahweh has blessed is kind of how the story goes. Um, and, and Balaam is a good example of how a voice from outside the camp, in this case, outside the people of Moab's camp, not outside the Israelite camp per se, but outside the camp of the people of Moab, Balaam brings a perspective that, that comes with a message that the king of Moab, Balak, is not ready to hear. Um, Balak wants one thing from Balaam and gets exactly the opposite instead. And you might now be in a place from the last few weeks as we've been talking about the prophetic voice and the prophetic role, you might be in a place where you're thinking to yourself, I, we need to hear voices from outside our camp. We need to hear different perspectives. We need people to illuminate our blind spots and help us to correct some of our prejudices and biases, help us to see things for what they actually are in the realm of justice, in the realm of idolatry, all of these categories we've kind of talked about. But what we're usually not ready for, what we're usually not ready for is the profound disruption that a voice from outside the camp often brings. Now, even though Jordan is from outside of our American camp, and he's happy to remind us of that fact over and over again, neither Jordan nor I felt like our voices were appropriately helpful or particularly helpful in embodying this idea of being outside the camp. 
So as part of our discussion for today, we're going to literally go outside the camp of our normal format. And we're gonna go outside the camp of Memorial Presbyterian Church and outside the camp of Presbyterianism. We're even going to go outside the camp of US theologians. We're gonna hear a little bit from a man named Oscar Garcia Johnson. Uh, he's someone that uh, folks in the PBA community might be familiar with from the Faith and Culture Forum last February. Um, Oscar is a professor and an associate dean at Fuller Theological Seminary. And he has most recently written a book called Spirit Outside the Gate. Um, it, it, it is an homage really to a book that was written a couple of decades ago by Orlando Costas, um, who wrote a book called Christ Outside the Gate. Orlando, uh, Oscar, sorry, Oscar Garcia Johnson's book is called Spirit Outside the Gate. And I'm going to put two links to videos of Oscars in the notes below this video. So I encourage you to go and watch these two videos to accompany what we're talking about today. In the first video that I've linked uh, in, in, uh, below this video, Oscar discusses his understanding of his own calling. And he sees himself as a disruptor. He sees himself as, a, quote, a theological provocateur. Someone who's supposed to provoke us, to, th to help us to think differently. And this helps us to understand how he places himself outside the camp, particularly of American theology. And then in the second video, he talks about his book, Spirit Outside the Gate, and he discusses how theology from the margins of society, particularly from the Latino and Latina experience, can help to disrupt and reshape our theology in the U.S. and our theology in the West more broadly. Now, there are a couple of reasons for us watching these videos beyond bringing in Oscar as a prophetic voice from outside our camp, beyond kind of just exposure. There are a couple of reasons we want to do this. First, we recognize that there will be a lot of terminology and concepts that are unfamiliar in what Oscar discusses. I recognize that. Just be prepared for it. This is intentional, and we hope that what it does is it sparks curiosity and questions. Feel free to send any questions or, or thoughts you have about the videos to either myself or Jordan or Dr. Grins. We won't necessarily have all the answers, but we can very easily get Dr. Ryan Gladwin on the phone uh, to talk about some of these things and help us understand them uh, if, if it's not something that we know much about. The second reason we want to do this is that there is a great benefit to simply listening to a voice that is unfamiliar to us. Oscar's voice, voice will be f unfamiliar to you, perhaps in language. One of the videos, the shorter of the two videos, is actually in Spanish with English subtitles. His voice might be unfamiliar in cadence or accent or tone. And all of this is helpful in stretching our ears, in maybe retraining our ears. And so my hope is that you are challenged by listening to Oscar, and I hope you also enjoy listening to him, getting to know him a little bit and hearing his kind of ideas on theology from outside our camp. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to watch those two videos and then we would welcome any feedback that you have. Next week we'll be back with our final uh, episode, if you will, of this prophetic voice and role series. Uh, we're going to be interviewing a friend of Jordan's who's from the Jewish community uh, and get his take on how uh, the Jewish community in 2020 looks at the prophets in the Hebrew Bible and sees their role as applicable in our contemporary society. Thanks everyone and we'll see you soon.